All right, I think we've got a good little crew here, so we're going to get started. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our first business support series webinar of 2021. Thank you all for joining us this morning. We are so excited to kick off another round of informative webinars for our members. I believe we did almost 70 last year, so this is exciting. This is our very first one, so we're looking forward to another full year. We are fully booked up until March, so if you're interested in hosting a webinar, get in touch with our events team and they can get you in uh, for March or April. I'm Emma Manchevsky. I'm communications manager here at the Halifax Chamber of Commerce, and I'm your host for today. We actually met with our guest speaker, Mark, several months ago, and within minutes, he had given us probably 10 tips for improving our website, things that I just hadn't even thought about. So I'm really looking forward to hearing more about search engine optimization today, or SEO. And although it sounds like a little bit of an intimidating term, Mark here is going to make it nice and accessible for all of us. You're gonna walk away from this webinar today with at least one thing you can do to start improving your SEO right away. Thank you to everyone who submitted questions for our web presenter. And when we get to the Q&A, feel free to type any other questions into the chat box. You can raise your hand and we can unmute you, whatever is easier for you. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our presenter and guest speaker today, Mark Taylor, founder and president of Make Your Mark Today Incorporated a tech and marketing agency specializing in SEO, marketing and IT support for small to medium sized businesses. Mark specializes in helping businesses grow with Google. So welcome, Mark, and thank you for joining us. Over to you. Great. Thanks a lot, Emma. And thanks to the Halifax Chamber of Commerce for having me on. Uh, so I'm just going to hop right into it because uh, in this webinar, I really want to help you guys out as much as possible. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick about 15-ish minutes of a little high-level overview on uh, what search engine optimization is and how you can actually go about ranking whatever your business or your websites that you own uh, for the right searches. And then I want to get right into a Q&A as soon as we can. And you guys can start submitting questions uh, about your website or send your website link into the chat already. And uh, the, the Chamber of Commerce uh, will, will start lining some of those up for me. Uh, in the Q&A. So if you have any questions already, uh, you can put it into the chat and uh, I'll make sure that we get to it. So I want to start off by just telling you guys a bit of a story. I was at a Chamber of Commerce event uh, about this time last year, I think. And I went up to someone who is now actually uh, one of my clients. And I was talking to them, uh, to them about what I do. And I said, yeah, I do search engine optimization. Uh, this is my company. And they said, oh, well, that's great. Like we rank number one for Google already. I'm like, oh, fantastic. Awesome, good job. And, and then I said, uh, I'm just curious, like what do you rank for? And they're like, oh, look. And they went on their phone and they showed me, they searched their name and that their website came up. And I'm like, oh, look at that. You do rank number one, like congratulations. But then I asked them, I said, how many new customers do you think are searching for your name right now? And they looked at me with a little bit of a stump look and they were like, um, yeah, yeah, probably no one. Like if they don't know me, they wouldn't be searching for my name. And this person was actually uh, owned a law firm here. And so I said, um, so what happens when someone searches for employment lawyer? Like, do you show up then? Because if we're thinking about giving you more business, that's really what we want to appear for, right? It's great that you, you appear for your own name, but p new customers who already know you just don't exist. Um, so that's really what I want to focus on here today is uh, search and ranking for the right search terms. And ultimately this comes down to the purpose of this meeting. And the purpose of this meeting isn't necessarily to rank well on Google search, but it is to get you or you as a business owner or your website, uh, a consistent stream of new incoming customers. So I hope that's something that is either of interest to you um, or maybe you already have it and you're looking to just optimize it even further. Uh, or maybe you run pay-per-click ads on Google and you understand the value of some website traffic that can come in. So that's the entire purpose of this meeting is I want to help you as the business owner get consistent, reliable, new incoming customers to your website and as many of them as possible. So that's gonna bring me into, I'm just gonna share my screen here and we're gonna take a look at searches. So as I mentioned already, um, when it first comes to search, we need to understand what do we wanna rank for? 
because if you rank for your name, whether your name is uh, Lisa Terrell, this is one of, one of my clients and her website's rank, ranks first for her name, that's great. Uh, but as I kind of mentioned before, your new customers uh, are not searching for your name. They are searching for something like the search employment lawyer. So this is some uh, high tech software that I have. I pay a couple thousand dollars a month to actually use this, uh, but that's because I'm obviously a marketing agency and do this as my business. Um, but as you can see, this is a Canada wide search for the search term employment lawyer. There's 3,400 searches per month for this search term. So already, if you are an employment lawyer or whatever your business is, if you're an architect or you sell financial services, um, you can start to get a relative idea of what are more popular searches uh, for business services that you offer. But not everyone has access and not any, everyone wants to pay a lot of money to use some of these high tech services, which is fine because we actually have free services too. So if you go to trends.google.com, that's where you can go and you can type in a search like employment lawyer. And you can see the relative amount of search volume is compared to something like uh, wrongful dismissal. So there we can see that the wrongful dismissal is something that you might want to also rank for or even rank for uh, more so than uh, employment lawyer. Uh, wrongful dismissal lawyer, let's see how that ranks. Not very well. So if you optimize your entire website around the search terms wrongful dismissal lawyer, you're leaving a lot of money and potential traffic on the table. Because as we can see from this Google Trends is that more people are searching for employment lawyer. And you can also narrow the geography down. So if you're in Nova Scotia, you can search for just Nova Scotia and you can see uh, that which terms are more popular for your particular area. And just to give you guys an idea, all of these are very rough estimates, all of these tools, uh, whether you're on Google Trends or the paid tools, none of them are perfect. Uh, it's more so to give you an idea of what search terms are the better ones to rank for. So that's step one, is finding uh, what you actually want to rank for and what's more popular. If you're in, if you're a Canadian business, which I assume most people are, are here, uh, are Canadian businesses, I recommend just setting your search term for Canada-wide uh, and you'll find the general terms that are used in Canada uh, over top of say American searches because there is some uh, discrepancy between, between borders there. So that's step one is finding out what you wanna rank for. So in this case, we don't wanna rank for employment lawyer and wrongful dismissal lawyer. Those are our, our best searches. So your next step would be to come over to Google and do an actual search for employment lawyer. Because what you want to see here is you want to see what websites and what type of a search it is that's actually ranking. So just before I break down the different types of searches, uh, I'm going to go over the uh, anatomy of a Google search. So the first four listings here are all Google pay-per-click ads. Um, you guys are probably pretty familiar with it. And I do have some people that will have come up to me and said, you know, we rank number one for employment lawyer. And I said, oh, that's great. Like, I know that my website actually ranks number one for employment lawyer. So I say, okay, show me. And so they'll, they'll pull it up and uh, they actually pay ads for it. And ads is a great way uh, to rank for searches and to get traffic on it. Um, but then I also ask them, I say, uh, so how many times do you click on the Google ads? And they said, oh, not very much because there is a very big difference between the traffic from Google ads and the traffic from with the organic searches. And I'm sure most of you guys are just like me where I do a search and I do this. I scroll down past the ads and I find the actual uh, first ranking websites because I just trust them more. Uh, this is one of my clients here that's ranked number one for employment lawyer. Uh, and obviously they get a ton of business from this search. So the anatomy of a search starts off with a couple of different Google ads. And these ads are great. Uh, to give you an example, some of my clients, we actually run Google ads and we do organic SEO. And we've noticed there's a big difference between the paid traffic and the organic traffic. With paid traffic, there tends to be a bounce rate of 80% or higher, uh, which is really bad. And that basically means someone clicks on and then like bounces right back off. Um, and they just don't visit or engage with your website at all. And that, that's not great. It's not really valuable at all. You have to pay for that click and then they just leave within like half a second. So it's a waste of a $6 or however much you're paying per click. 
And then with the organic search, when people actually scroll down and click onto your website, we notice that those people tend to stay on your site for about a minute and a half to two minutes, uh, where people stay on your site from an ad for about 30 seconds ish. Uh, and the bounce rates for the organic searches are typically less than 50%. So ultimately the quality of traffic you get from ranking organically is a lot higher quality traffic than you do from uh, being in these Google ads. So it's not a bad thing to have these Google ads and by all means you can run profitable businesses from this, uh, but you have to pay a lot for these clicks and the organic searches just drive way more clicks anyways. Uh, the top organic search result usually gets about 30 to 35% of all clicks uh, it's the single biggest source of uh, traffic for every Google search. The second part of this Google search is this area here, which is the, oh, also just ignore my uh, related keywords here. This is a, a plugin that I have to show different searches that you could also rank for. Um, but anyways, the next step in a Google search is this local map pack is what I call it. And there's usually three results here. And typically, this is very specialized with uh, particularly where you are searching from. So you might have the best employment law firm with hundreds of reviews, but if you are not physically close to that office, you will not appear in this local map pack. There are some ways to overpower it by just getting like a really, really strong review profile is the, the main thing that you can do. Um, but for the most part, it's a proximity related search. And this local map pack here pulls in from your Google My Business profile. So if you do not have a Google My Business profile, uh, you need to absolutely get one. Even if you are a service business like myself, I even have a Google My Business profile. Get a Google My Business profile and fill out as much information as you possibly can on there. So that's where all that information comes from. And the single biggest ranking factor for this is your reviews. And Google actually is not looking for all five-star reviews. Uh, Google will penalize you if you only have five-star reviews. Uh, and that's because it looks like you have essentially, you know, paid 50 of your closest friends to, to go and review uh, Mitchell and Ferguson Associates. So you don't only want five-star reviews. And even if you have like four real reviews from customers and they're all five stars, go in and give yourself a four-star review just for now until you get a bad review, because eventually you will get a bad review. And if you have a good review process in place, then the bad reviews are not gonna matter at all. What Google wants to see is that you're responding to those bad reviews and that you're trying to make an effort to improve your business. One of the ways that we can measure that is if you get a positive re review come in after a bad review. So that's why it's important to have a review process in place of just constantly asking your customers to go and leave you a Google review. Not only does this help your Google My Business profile, but it ties in with your website because you put in your website here and Google knows that, hey, um, this business on the map pack is also related to this website. And so who do you think Google would want to rank? A website that has uh, a Google My Business profile with two reviews or a Google My Business profile that has 50 reviews? Well, obviously the more reviews, the more authoritative, the more trusted that business can be and clearly the more popular that business is too. So it actually does have quite a large effect on your search rankings too. Uh, my website here or my client's website that ranks number one, they have, I believe they have like 28 reviews, which uh, I'm trying to get them to get more and more reviews, but uh, it's low, but you can see here, it's more than uh, a lot of these other law firms that are physically close to where I'm searching from right now. Um, then we come down and these are the actual organic search results here. So this is the third part of a Google search, which is the organic uh, listings and that pulls from your website. Typically these get the most clicks of any part of a Google search. You will get some map clicks here from website directions. Um, some people go into your actual reviews and look at you there. But for the most part, all of the business comes from these organic website listings. So the question comes into, you know what to do to rank for your Google My Business profile in this map pack here. You obviously know that you can go and pay Google and run PPC ads and get your website appearing there. Um, although that can be costly, 
And the big question, and this is really what I mean when I say SEO, which is optimizing your website to appear for these searches here, because that ends up what is what is the most valuable for businesses to appear on. So the question comes in to be then how do we get our website appearing for this search and appearing in this listings here? So it starts off with your actual website content. So this right here is a Mason website, a new website that we just finished building for a client in Ontario. And we just released it. I think it was last week we just released it. And this is their website. And so when you're thinking about their website, so we've already found out what searches we want to rank for, whether it's employment lawyer, um, maybe you're an architect and you want to rank for architects in Halifax, um, find out what those main searches are. And then when you come to your website, you need to actually have content that has and talks about those services and products that you offer. And I don't just mean throwing up a web page and saying, hey, we're an accounting firm, like here's our price for doing accounting. You need to have more information because think about it, right? Like you, this is your website. This is really, uh, and I'm, I actually, I really like that COVID has come into play because people are really taking their websites more seriously. But when people come onto your website, it's basically like them walking in the front door of a brick and mortar shop, of a coffee shop or whatever. And so what information do you want to give them that just walked into your store? Well, you want to give them a few things. You want to give them information about the products that you have the prices about the products that you have, a way for them to actually buy or start the buying process of the products that you have. So when it comes to your website, the first thing that I want us to do is everyone, you need to have your website encrypted, which means HTTPS up here in your URL. All your websites need to have this feature on it, not HTTP, it needs to be HTTPS. So that's extremely important. If you don't have that, Google really does not want to rank you. So that's the first step. The second step is to making the content on your page applicable and detailed for new potential customers coming in. Typically for the homepage, what I'd recommend is ranking it for your branded search terms and maybe a little bit for one generic term that you are in. So if you're an architect, um, I might rank this site for uh, maybe it's Arrow Architect and you would try to optimize for this, the search term architect. And maybe there's some uh, you know, more nuanced services like uh, residential architect, then you would build out a new page for that residential architect. So your homepage, you wanna have a little bit of information and really kind of try to funnel people to the more specific products and services that you offer. So initially we give them a way to contact you and then you have to describe some of your work Always include images. Uh, your images, by the way, make sure that they are at least less than 200 kilobytes in size, because uh, if it's bigger than that, and a lot of images are very big, they will slow down your site dramatically. And uh, that is not a good thing for Google. And it's not a good thing for the users coming onto your site either. And then you want to have headers. So headers are a really important way that Google will understand your content and how your content is structured. And you want to have headers that include the search terms that you're ranking for. So that would be something like our masonry work, um, masonry contractor projects, stone and brick services. And so you can see how this slowly gets into more and more information about uh, the business, the business owner, um, and what they represent. Really just trying to help your customers know about you and help Google identify, oh, this is a website about masonry. And so clearly Google knows that this is a website about masonry um, and that you're gonna rank for those services. So let's check out uh, one of the more detailed pages that we are really trying to get ranking. Bricklayers is a big search term. Uh, we include the hey, Mark, locality. Sorry to here. interrupt. Yeah. Are you able to repeat the size of the images again? Yeah, so the image size, keep it less than 200 kilobytes. Ideally, uh, if you really wanna get into like hardcore technical SEO, we want it less than 150 kilobytes, um, and that's KB. Uh, it's not really that concerning, but uh, for the most part, under 200 kilobytes, you should be okay for now. Um, it, I, I will definitely say that a lot of websites I go onto, you'll have uh, images that are two megabytes, three megabytes. Those are huge images. 
um, and they really slow down the load time. Uh, and Google has actually, so when it comes to the Google algorithm, there's not much that we know about, but Google has said a couple times that, hey, this is a ranking factor. And usually when SEOs like myself hear, hey, this is a ranking factor, uh, we take it really seriously. And one of the things that Google said is, hey, um, HTTPS is a ranking factor. So if your site is encrypted, that's a ranking factor. So that's a huge thing. They've also said that site speed is gonna be a ranking factor coming this year. And so what that means is that your site needs to load in preferably less than one second. And the biggest way you do that is by ensuring your images are small. Uh, so that's really important uh, for your guys' websites. So on this particular services page, we're trying to rank for the term bricklayers. Uh, that's our main search term. Um, initially, we have a little bit of content here. You don't want to go right away into saying like have a, a call to action. You want to have at least like one or two sentences. Uh, so we got two little sentences here. And usually in the first term, in the first couple sentences, we'll also include whatever search term we're trying to rank for. So there we have brick laying here. Um, we have brickwork, uh, greater Toronto area. And so kind of throwing in that. You don't need to have the localities. Um, because you Google usually will recognize your Google My Business profile, which you will also say what areas you service. But it is good just uh, for the actual comfort of the users coming onto your site, um, because this business serves the Toronto and GTA area. So uh, you immediately know there's a picture of the CN Tower in the background, and you immediately know that they service your area. So um, it does help from the user's sake a little bit. And then immediately I go into a uh, form that they can fill out. I do like to have a call to action to reach out if you're a service-based business like this, um, very close to the top of the page. People don't. People will scroll pages for a while. They don't like clicking through and going to navigate to multiple pages. So I'd rather have a contact form right on the page that you're ranking as opposed to saying, hey, here's a button, click to go to the contact us page. Um, it's just one extra step. You wanna make as little steps as possible for the people who come onto your website. Uh, and then we scroll down the, this, we have a lot of different information here, um, all with different searches that we're trying to rank for, but primarily we're, we're trying to rank for bricklayer. So here's bricklayer showcase, bricklaying projects, uh, bricklayer services, things like that. The second biggest thing that I see people doing a lot of, which is poor, is having not enough content on your website. Uh, so I, there's so many websites that I'll see and they have like one paragraph of information. That's not enough information. People want to know what you do, how you do it. And you as a business owner, you have expertise in it, right? So give them as much expertise as you can because it helps people who are investigating or vetting your business. And it also helps Google understand what you do. Um, so by all means, put your expertise onto your website. Okay, so that's how you get your website content actually ready to rank. Then the second thing that comes into trying to get that website ranking for that organic search, remember we're trying to get our website in here. Uh, you build a website, it's all good, it's all great. Um, also make sure you have an about us page, a contact us page and a privacy policy page. Uh, those are just kind of three standard pages that Google likes to see. But let's say that uh, you build this website out and the content's all optimized. Uh, you have a Google My Business profile, you're doing good, but I'll ask you this question again, like why should Google trust you, right? Because Emma and I could go and make uh, Emma and Mark employment law firm. And we could go build out a page and we could start trying to like get all this content optimized for it. But how does Google know that Emma and Mark employment law firm is a valid and legitimate law firm in Halifax, right? So the big way that you guys do that is by getting Google reviews. But another way that you get it is by having what we call backlinks to your website. And what that is, is it's other websites that link to your website. So if we look at Arrow Masonry, um, this is their backlink profile. And there's a couple free versions of this uh, that you can test out if you want, but uh, you can see that we have three backlinks total from two domains. That's not a lot of backlinks so far. Um, that's a big part of the work that I do with my SEO services is getting backlinks to clients' websites uh, because it is a very big ranking factor and it's a very big trust factor with Google because that's how Google starts to learn about what you are. Um, if we look at Terrell Scott, which is one of my clients too, you can see that we have 
Um, we just have under 100 backlinks from about 75 different websites. Uh, so already, you guys can probably see, uh, it's clearly much more trustworthy than the Arrow Masonry site is. Uh, and that's just because there's more backlink links linking to it. And it's important too with these backlinks that you can give inf more information to Google about your, your business. So a big way you do that is the actual anchor text. So we have family lawyer here. So that means someone highlighted on their website, family lawyer, and they link that search term back to their website. Uh, divorce statistics, uh, that's obviously a, a big one as well. Um, so if you actually rank, rank the, the search terms and the actual words in the other, the other websites, that's the ideal place to go. Uh, you, do, you will have sometimes where you know people put your actual website link like this, and that's completely fine too. Uh, but that gives you guys an idea of how you can get backlinks for your site. Um, the biggest way you can do backlinks is uh, with your social media profiles, obviously. Um, social media is a great way. They all usually have a website link. Uh, add your links in there. Another big way is you can join different organizations like the Halifax Chamber of Commerce. They have a place where you can fill out your business profile and information. And guess what? They also have a place for you to put your website in and link your website in there. Um, there's also things like 1% for the world. They're an organization where you donate like 1% of your profits to environmental and local uh, or sustainable causes. Um, and they usually provide backlinks too. Uh, so all the different organizations, associations that you're a part of, that's a great way to get backlinks that are sometimes free or you might have to pay for a little bit, but at least you're doing some good for the world or for uh, your actual business. So that's an easy way that you guys can get backlinks. Um, obviously, the more the merrier, and it's kind of the same thing as reviews, right? The more websites that uh, talk about you as a bricklayer or as an architect or as a lawyer, the better. Um, and the more that they link back to your site, the better. So that's how you make Google trust your actual website to appear for the searches. And then from that, it's just about tracking your rankings and uh, trying to see your website climb up the ranks. So how do you do that? You can go into search Google Search Console. So if you go to search.google.com search, con search console, connect your website into this free service from Google because this will tell you um, what people are, what searches you're starting to rank for. Uh, it'll also tell you where you're ranking for them, like what number and position you want to be top 10. That's page one. And it'll tell you how many people are clicking on your website and what searches they are doing it. So when you have a new website, you first connected to Google Search Console, uh, you're going to be like this for a while. Um, unless maybe you have some visitors coming in from social. But for the most part, this is all about Google searches, this Search Console. And then all of a sudden, you release your website and you start to go up the rankings. You'll see some impressions come in. And then you'll start to see some clicks come in. Uh, and then you'll actually be able to see eventually when your site gets a little bit bigger that, oh, hey, there's a lot of clicks coming in. Uh, there's a lot of impressions happening. And then that's where you'll be able to see queries, which is what people are actually typing into Google before they click on your website. And then you can even add in a ranking position as well for some of them. Uh, not in this one, but uh, you can also select your pages, find the different pages that that you have and see what searches people are coming onto that page for. So this is a new page we just released here. You can see they're starting to get some clicks, more impressions, uh, and gives you an idea of what searches people are doing and uh, gives you a little bit of a target for how to optimize your website content a little bit more. So that's the way you can track it. And then you can obviously do a search yourself on Google to uh, track your uh, website. So that's kind of my, my high level spiel. Uh, hopefully I didn't take up too much time, but I'm happy to jump into a Q&A with everyone right now. Um, so if you guys want to start asking your questions, put in your website, I'll take a look at your website right now, I'll give you guys some tips and what you can do to rank with it. And we can uh, look at that now. Um, and if you guys ever have any questions about Google, uh, by all means, you can come onto my website, makeyourmarktoday.ca and you can book an appointment with me there. Um, so I'm just gonna see if I can pull up the chats here and let's see. Yes, what we, we actually have quite a few questions and we have some Perfect. websites all ready to go. So however nice. you wanna start, uh, we, can, we can get going. Okay, I'm gonna take a look here. Uh, speaking of Google, I constantly keep getting what I think are automated calls from Google regarding optimization, our account, and also validate our business account. Does Google do this or do you suppose this is spam calls? 
This is sometimes spam calls. Bill, thanks for asking that this question. Um, also, Google does have a feature on your phone where if you do a search on Google Maps or you do a regular Google search, um, Google will actually does have a service that will allow the Google Assistant to call a business for you. I would take these calls um, and just hear them out. But if they're pretending to be Google, like an actual person pretending to be Google, as opposed to like, if it's a Google Assistant calling you, they should be able to either uh, leave a message with you or uh, you should be able to leave a message with them and say, hey, like, yes, I'm a plumber, like leave them your name and number and like, I'll get back to you. Um, it might be spam calls though too, uh, but Google does also call people. But if Google ever, it, it, they usually don't call people though. So um, they will sometimes, but uh, yeah, for the most part, it's probably someone actually calling you. It could be spam though. Um, but if they're pretending to be Google, I would be skeptical of it for sure. Um, and I would maybe get them to, they should have your email and contact information. So get them to email you as opposed to, to calling you if they're pretending to be Google. If I search and click on my own website often, will that skew Google to show me my own website first when I do a Google search term? Yes, it does. Uh, it does skew your own website because Google is trying to provide each search is different for everyone. And they're trying to provide you with websites that you know, like, use, and trust. And so if you've been on your own website, uh, Google is going to show you your own website. So the way you get around doing that is you uh, do a new incognito window, or if you're in Safari, I think it's called private browsing mode, go into incognito window and do a search for employment lawyer. Um, and so if you do this and you can even click allow, this will scrub out any sort of history and cookies that Google has on you and, and it will give you the real results. Um, so this is what someone like a new customer would see when they're searching for you. Um, so that's how you can kind of get around the fact that Google's showing you your website. Um, let's see what else we got here. Can you explain what bounce rate means and how can we optimize this? Yeah, this is a great question. Bounce rate means if someone comes onto your, your page and leaves within, I think it's 30 seconds, that counts as a bounce. Um, and what it means is that uh, people thought you were offering one thing, they went onto your website, it's not what they wanted, and so they're out of there. And that's a negative ranking factor for Google because clearly whatever you advertised in your, your searches, if they thought they were getting an employment lawyer, um, you, they go in there and it turns out that it takes you to a page that's like, hey, here's your injury lawyer information. That's not what they're looking for, they're out of there. Uh, the way you can optimize for that is by having a video on your site. Video is probably gonna be one of the best things that you can do to add into your website because it gives you a lot of content and it gives the users a lot of trust value, especially if you put your face in there. Um, you can see with my website, obviously I got my video here uh, and that's just a way for people to um, stay on your site longer. Uh, and that's kind of a way that you can counteract bounce rate is by getting people to stay on your site longer. So you, most sites are going to have a bounce rate of like 50 to, or probably 30 to 70% anyways, uh, you just want it as low as possible. Um, but having a video on it will increase the time on your page, which helps to remediate bounce factor and also prove to Google that's like, you know what, we got 60% bounce rate, but the people who do stay on are watching a two minute video. And most people stay on websites for less than 30 seconds. So if you can get them on your website for two minutes, you've done something really good. I want to clean up the URLs on my site that are a few years old. Will this negatively impact my rankings? Yes, this will. So when you're on a URL, this up here, um, it's an address. It's the same thing as a business address. So if your URL is bricklayer, and then all of a sudden you decide to change your address to bricklayers with an S, then that's the same as moving from downtown Halifax out into Bedford. Google has no idea where it went. So the way you can remediate that, um, ideally I always like URLs to have the search term in it. And then if you have multiple words, use a, a hyphen in between it, bricklayer services like that. Um, but if you do, I would recommend definitely trying not to change your URLs unless it's like you're using something that's like, uh, you know, page, 
is one, two, three, four, five. Like that's a horrible URL. Um, it doesn't say anything. So if you, you have something like that, you can change your URLs. The way you get around that is by doing a 301 redirect. You can do that by having um, some SEO plugins on your website, uh, Yoast, Rank Math, if you're using WordPress, those are two ways that you can do it or whatever your website host is. Um, you can have, you can set a 301 redirect, which is where you say, here's my old URL, here's my new U URL. Anything that's coming to my old URL, send it over this way. And Google reads out the same way where they say, hey, this old page over here, they're now over here. It's the same thing, but they're just over here now. You do lose a little bit of that value still, about 80%-ish roughly. But um, yeah, so try to avoid changing your URLs, but if you do, 301 redirect them. Um, can you repeat the max size of images? Yes, we did that. So less than 200 kilobytes. Do you have a preferred site building platform for small and medium businesses? Yes, I do. It's WordPress. Uh, they just have uh, way too many options that, that you need to do. Some business owners find WordPress a little bit overwhelming. They've been taking some big steps in the last two years uh, to really overcome that. Um, but yeah, WordPress 100%. If you are going to build a business, uh, use WordPress. And then I use something that's called Elementor Pro, which is a, a page builder for you. Um, so that's, uh, I think I can pull it up here. Uh, so this is the page builder that I use. It's fantastic. It allows you to build beautiful websites like you would on Square or Wix. Um, and yeah, it allows you to do that on WordPress. So um, that's the combination that I use. And that's what I recommend as well. Uh, using WordPress, Elementor, and then I get the Rank Math um, SEO plugin, which is Rank Math. What is the best website platform? Yep, we just did that. What do you, where can we find out what ranking factors are important to Google? Is there a source you'd recommend us looking at? So there is no place that you can actually find out what the ranking factors are for Google. Um, it's not public information. Uh, Google protects this information pretty, pretty seriously. Um, the way you can do it and the way SEOs like myself do it is uh, there's larger scale tests that we'll do. And so that's kind of the reason why I know how to build things out is just from constant research on a lot of the different tests. If you are looking for a source, backlinko.com is probably a good place to start. Um, subscribe to their newsletter, uh, look at their blog. They have a great uh, helpful guides in there that you can find a lot of information on. I use, a, I use Squarespace website. How do I add SEO to that website? I like how user-friendly this platform is. Yeah, Squarespace is very user-friendly. Uh, within their page settings, you have the option to um, say what your SEO title is, your SEO meta description. And what that information is, is that dictates what shows up here. It doesn't always dictate it. Uh, like, like you can see, like this information here is cut off. This information here is cut off. Uh, you can tell Google, say, hey, this is what our title should be on a Google search. Hey, this is what our description should be on a Google search. Doesn't mean that Google's gonna use it. Um, they do most times, but sometimes not. Uh, so that's how you can like add SEO a little bit, um, but you, you can't really add SEO, right? So the things that I talked about here, which is building out your content better, finding out the proper searches to rank for, um, that is what SEO is, is just constant analysis of your website and trying to improve the content on it. Um, and trying to continue to climb rankings for the people who uh, do search for your site. What is ranking? What is a zero ranking position mean in Google Search Console? Um, zero usually means that you are in a featured snippet. And what that means is, let's do a search here for basketball shoes. Um, maybe that's a better example. Uh, so if you were in, if you were, these are all ads here. Uh, what about, um, how do I, yeah, let's do something like this. Um, what, what it is, is there's a featured snippets for some searches. Like I want to find something. How do I remove a tick? Let's see if I can do that. So this right in here is what we call a featured snippet. And that's where Google takes information from your website and displays it here. So this would be a what a zero search position rankings means. 
Roaming Groovers. Let's check it out. All right, we got a website in here. Oops, that's not it. Okay. Roaming Groovers. Um, roaming Groovers, oh, 1G. Dog kennel. Oh, nice. Okay. Powered by WordPress. All right. So uh, let's, uh, so you're a dog kennel here, obviously. Um, one thing that you guys can do is you can go to Google Chrome extensions and you can get a, uh, an extension called SEO minion. And you can click on this here and you can analyze on page SEO. Um, so your title is a little bit too long. Uh, so you can adjust that. It looks like you're with WordPress. So go grab the plugin rank math and adjust that there. Um, add a description in. You are you have HTTPS, that's good. You need to build out the content on your pages a little bit more. Um, so you can see the headings. The headings are really important. Uh, so you start off with H1, which is your, your title and that's roaming rovers dog kennels. That's great. Um, your next headings are home contact COVID-19 impact. So I would have your, your second heading to be um, about our dog kennel. And you can start talking about your dog kennel and put in some information in there. Uh, and then you could have more information, right? Like how to start your adoption with our dog, dog kennel. You can start to have information in there too. Uh, it looks like you also need an about us page and a contact us page potentially. Let's see. Yeah, so I would convert your blog. Um, so it looks like this is pointing to a blog post here. Yeah, go make WordPress pages for your about us, contact us and a privacy policy page. Do that. And then if you have a uh, Google My Business profile so far, uh, link that up as well. And make sure that your business name, your address, and your phone number are the same on your website and your hours of operation are the same on your website as they are in your Google My Business profile. Okay, let's take a look at Tranquility app. And if you have any specific questions about that website, I noticed there wasn't any particular questions about it, but if you have any specific questions, uh, go over to makeyourmarktoday.ca and you can book a meeting with me. We can chat for 15 minutes about uh, your, your specific needs. Happy to do that for anybody on this call. Tranquility, or if you're watching this uh, afterwards on YouTube, um, yeah, feel free to head over to makeyourmarktoday.ca and always happy to jump on a call with anyone for 15 minutes, take a look at your website, help you guys out with your questions. Tranquility.app, tranquility all right, let's check this out. Okay, so Tranquility. Okay, so you are CB, CBT uh, therapist, I assume. Some sort of app that's for CBT therapy. So what I would do here, okay, you got an about us, you got to contact us, that's great, that's great. Um, our product, yeah, let's check out what this is. Okay, so you, you got to check all the links on your site, make sure there's no broken links. Um, that's not great to see. One-on-one -on -one coaching, okay. So you're a CBT therapist. So what I would recommend doing is uh, we need to probably build out your blog post a little bit more um, and have some pages that are specifically ranking for CBT therapy. Uh, so what I would do if I was you is um, in the medical space, it's pretty hard to rank for, for searches, uh, but you might be able to do something like CBT therapy app, something like that, um, CBT app. So that's pretty difficult of a search therapy app. Let's check this out. This would be a good place to start is to, I would make a, a section on your homepage um, in H2 and title it CBT therapy app. Um, I would do that on your homepage. Um, but yeah, I would really look at finding the right searches is gonna be huge for this site. Um, and the right searches that are easy to rank for because in the medical space, Google takes it really seriously. Uh, so if you're just like, this is a relatively new site, it seems like, but um, it takes a while to build up that, that confidence. So really finding the searches that are easy to rank for is going to be huge for this website. 
capture it photography. Let's check it out. What do you suggest for a portfolio slash image based site? I suggest uh, the same thing uh, for a portfolio and image based site. Um, it's pretty much the same thing, right? Where you can have plenty of images on it. Uh, and obviously like having it look good is like a great, great thing as well. Uh, so let's check it out here. You need to update your copyright in the footer. And then I probably add pages for your about us, contact us in the footer. Um, portraits, let's check out this. So this page right here, let's do a solo in there. Let's do family portrait here. Let's see if we can go into it. Portraits, family. So if you are offering family portraits as a service, um, this page here is super thin, right? Like there's a lot of pages here. It looks like this pulls up an image. Um, we really need to build out this page as a full blown website. Uh, so that includes having an H1, having a page header, having information about your family photography services, right? Uh, you really need to build out the information and content on this web page first. Uh, so that's what I recommend doing for this site is you really need to get down this content um, and, and build it out into being a, a full service website. And a way you guys can do this, a really easy way is whatever service you offer, if you offer family photography, family photography, do a search for it for whatever service you offer, go to the first search result and then find out what they have on their website. Uh, and so you can use the SEO minion here and you can check it out. Um, I love the photography searches because it's actually really easy to rank for it. But yeah, look at this right here, right? The first search result has ha Halifax family photographer as their heading. Um, you don't have that as a, your heading, right? We have family here. I'm not sure if that's an H1 or not. Um, and then if you go down through all headings, they have photography session, design session, memories, your family session, and three easy steps. Uh, so they have information here about what they do. Um, and that's not just helpful for the users, but it's helpful, helpful for Google as well. Uh, how can I see who has backlinked me? Um, it's to see who is backlinked to you, you usually have to find services like um, Ahrefs or Ahrefs, however you guys want to pronounce it. Ahrefs, Moz, um, I think Neil Patel might have something too. Uh, you can just search on Google for um, like backlink analysis for your website. You might be able to find some free ones out there. Um, I really like using Ahrefs. I think they have a lower pricing model too, if you're interested. And they also have like a seven days for seven bucks, I think. Um, so you could actually like go onto Ahrefs and pay seven bucks and you can see who's backlinking to you already. Um, but for the most part, I wouldn't worry about who's backlinking to you because the answer is it's probably not enough. Uh, the answer is probably like go and get more backlinks. I could not bring up the Google search. Okay, I'm not sure what that means. Our business is primarily international, 95% plus. Any tips for optimizing for international searches? Map pack does not apply. Yes, you are correct. A map, pa map pack does not, does not apply to international searches. Uh, so for something like um, basketball shoes, for example, that's an international search. You have Nike, you have Adidas, you have uh, them ranking for it. Uh, the optimizing for that is the exact same way. Uh, you find out what people are searching for. You find the search that you think you can rank for. Uh, figure out how many backlinks you need to get for it. And then build out your content uh, to optimize for that. Another way you can do it is by adding schema, which is data about your website. Um, that's pretty helpful for international searches because not many people are doing that. So I would add FAQ schema, about us schema on your about us page, contact us schema on your, on your contact us page. When it comes to international searches, uh, things are a lot more competitive. So um, that can kind of make things a lot more in particular. So if you have particular um, interest, Bill, uh, shoot me a, a message or uh, book an appointment with me and we can chat about your international searches and really dive into it. Can you unlink from a past company if it's from their website? Um, yes, you can. Google search, I think what you're referring to, Lynn, is uh, backlinking. And yes, you can kind of unlink it. I would recommend probably not worrying about it for the most part, because usually it only helps. Um, unless it's like a super scammy thing, then you should go to uh, Google and just search for Google disavow tool. If you have Search Console set up, you can do it that there. New Brooklyn Media, let's check it out. Oops. Copy, there we 
go. New Brooklyn Media, not encrypted. Let's get that encrypted. So yeah, New Brooklyn, get uh, HTTPS for your site, uh, home, about us, contact us. That's good. You got an about us, contact us page, your work. We don't just create content, we tell stories, okay. So it looks like you guys are a um, video service, I believe. Uh, full service offering video production design, okay. Yeah, so video, photo and design services. Um, we need to make this more obvious, right? Like, yes, it is obvious that you guys do video services because you have a big video here playing, um, but Google needs to know that. And the headings on your, your website need to know that too. So let's take a look at the headings on your site. I, for new Brooklyn media, so yeah, get it encrypted. And then I would build out your pages a little bit more. I know videography or videographer, that's a big page. That should be a separate new page where you optimize particularly for that search term. And then uh, also photography, you could optimize for that search term. Uh, so I would optimize for that. I would also add those as products and services to your Google My Business profile. No one really does that. Um, you guys need to be doing that. And then add an SEO, it looks like you're using WordPress here. So uh, add Rank Math as an SEO plugin to your site um, and fill out all of the SEO information for every page here. Um, this H2, this is way too long. You don't have an H1. I know a lot of people will do this where they want to format their font a different way. Uh, yes, you can do that. That's fine, but it needs, it can't be this like long quote. Uh, so this H2 is way too long. You have to probably cut it in half at least. Uh, and also there's no H1 on your page. So we need a, an H1 on every page, essentially the H1 here, it should be new Brooklyn media. Um, and then H1 on your photography page is photography, your videography page, videography, same, things like that pineappleworks.ca. And again, I'm happy to sit down with any of you guys. Like I, I don't challenge, I don't pressure anyone to like buy any services. I'm just happy to help with people. Um, so if you guys want to book a call with me, you can go to makeyourmarktoday.ca uh, and you can actually schedule right into my calendar there. Happy to sit down with you guys for 15 minutes, take a look at your website, help with your particular concerns. Pineappleworks.ca. First of all, get rid of this pop-up. This is brutal. Um, this is not a great user experience to have a pop-up first thing. The only time I would maybe have a pop-up is like on an exit. Uh, but first thing, pop-up on your website, not great. Uh, because when someone is searching for whatever you guys are doing, like boutique events, staffing based, um, to be honest, when people come to your site through Google search, they don't care that you're open because, and here's your COVID-19 statement, right? They care that you are a staffing company and they are wanting to learn about your staffing services. So give them that, right? So a lot of things when it comes to people's website, there's so much stuff we can do when it comes to tech, right? We can build out incredible websites and funnels, but it really comes down to like making the pathway for potential users as easy as possible to get to you. That's how you're going to drive the most business. So get rid of this pop-up. Um, bartender and event services. Okay, so I'm going to load this extension up, check out the on-page SEO. Uh, yeah, let's get an let's say you're using WordPress. So get rank math, fill out the SEO information, um, change your H1 here. Oh, if you're using H1s for your headings for different, um, services here, this, this H1 in particular should be, uh, either your business name or something about your, it, sh it should probably be Halifax server and bartender event services. That's great. That's a nice, that's a nice H2 there. Um, that's a really nice H2. Um, this H2 way too long. Um, this H2 is, uh, maybe okay. Um, and then this H3 is way too long, uh, but this is pretty good. Search.google.com capstone project solutions. Okay. Let's try this guy. Okay. Okay. What are your thoughts? I'm just going to scroll through a couple of questions here. I'm also using Elementor pro and WordPress. Great. Uh, what are your thoughts on Drupal? Drupal's, Drupal's fine. Um, I haven't, I don't have that much experience with it. Uh, WordPress is just has the most available ways to optimize for SEO. Do we need to be tagging photos with search terms to get better rankings? Yes, you do. Every time you upload an image to your website, uh, there's usually something that's called 
alt text. And what that means is that's important for Google to, to fill out because that helps Google understand what your image is about. Now, I try to have the image fairly related text as photography services. It's not or, um, oh, sorry, I think I cut out there. So yeah, your alt text on your image uh, should represent approximately what the image is. Um, so if you have people shaking hands, like you can't really have the alt text as photography services, right? So have a picture of like a, photo of a, of a camera and then title that one photography services. Um, how do we find out what searches are easier to rank for or harder to rank for? Uh, how you find out that is by doing some sort of keyword research tools. Um, Ahrefs has seven days for seven bucks. There's also some free keyword research tools. Um, yeah, if you just Google search for keyword research tools, you'll be able to find what searches are harder or easier to rank for. Usually local searches are always easier to rank for than international searches. We're currently working on a client website, SEO, vanity fashion, any tips? Yep, I'll get to that in a sec. Should the H1 be geared toward your company name or your specific services? On your homepage, your H1 should be dedicated to your company name. Um, and then on your actual service pages, your H1 should be dedicated to your primary search term for that service on your page. Alt text is really important for making your website accessible. Yes, it is. Excellent session, thanks. Oh, thanks, Sharon. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump into a couple more of these websites here. Um, blended Athletics, let's check that guy out. Hey, Mark, I think we have time for about two more websites. Okay, sounds good. Blended Athletics, this site. Oh, I like this site. It's very, very nice. I'm probably guessing that some of your images are pretty... Uh, big, but your um, image is loaded pretty quick. So I'm actually not too concerned about that. Um, change your copyright, make sure this is automatically updated. Uh, members schedule. Uh, okay, so it looks like it's a gym in Dartmouth. Um, so you guys need to fill out your uh, search information. So this is what you recommend for Google to, to grab. Um, you're using a lot of H1s. It's okay if you have like two H1s, um, but for the most part, you should try to do one H1. Um, you can get away with two, but uh, there's four H1s here. It's, it's too much. Uh, definitely change these to like H2s. Um, your H2 is too, this one's too long, your H2, uh, but you can still format this font with uh, just regular paragraph tags. Um, you got a couple other longer headings here, but for the most part, this is actually a pretty decent site so far. Um, you're on the right path. I, there's enough content. There's good content on here. Um, I would probably build out your homepage a little bit more. Your homepage is going to be ranking for a lot of terms. Uh, so I would probably add in some headings like uh, why choose our Dartmouth gym, uh, something like that. All right, let's grab one more website here. Uh, uh, um, kidsinpain.ca, okay. Kidsinpain.ca. Solution for kids in pain, skip, okay. Um, so I'm trying to find out what it is that you do in a relatively quick time, because usually that's what you're also, the users are trying to figure out too, which is the first thing they land on your, your, your web page. They're trying to figure out what do you do and how can you help them? They're trying to figure that out as soon as possible. Um, it's not that evident to me right off the bat what it is that this does for me. Um, so Ken is leader in children's pain research, but this knowledge isn't being put into practice. So yeah, I would, if, if you're just in a research info, uh, web website, then you could probably dive into some of your research and have some navigation to this research that, that you're talking about. Um, but yeah, I'd probably shoot, shoot me a message because in the medical space, especially when it comes to things like this, um, it can be pretty sensitive with Google. So uh, yeah, shoot me a message. We'll meet up for it. Um, thank you everyone for coming to uh, this chat. I hope you guys took some information away. There's a lot to unpack and it is kind of, uh, it's kind of unfortunate to be honest that it's so hard to understand how to rank for searches because 
Um, Google wants to provide the best results and it makes it hard for business owners to do it. So if you have any more questions, you want to dive into your website, go to makeyourmarktoday.ca and I'm happy to look at any website with you guys. Thanks for having me on, Emma, and thanks for everyone for joining. Thank you so much, Mark. I don't know about the rest of you, but I think I could sit here for another hour and just have you go through websites. <laughs> that was incredible. I really learned a lot. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I think we're going to have to have you back in a few months because we have so many more yeah, questions absolutely. and websites to get through. So we'd love to have you back. Um, so everyone's homework, I think we know it, head to Google My Business, get your information updated. That's step number one, and then go to Mark's website. Um, so join us next week. We've got individual premier candidate discussions with Labby Kusulis, Ian Rankin, and Randy Delory. So get to know uh, your future premier because that will be one of those three. We're also hosting a virtual chamber 101 next Wednesday where you can learn how to take full advantage of your chamber membership. And not to worry everyone, this webinar was recorded and it will be available to all attendees shortly within the next couple of days on YouTube. So you can uh, restudy everything Mark taught us today. <laughs> Um, have a great day, everyone. We hope to see you at the next one. And thanks again, Mark. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys.